Hi there and welcome to Juicy Celeb Talks. The world of hip-hop is no stranger to controversies, power plays, and a deep-seated connection to the streets. Recently, the dynamics of influence and control within the industry have been highlighted in a series of events involving some of the biggest names in rap. These incidents have revealed a complex web of alliances, conflicts, and the often dangerous game of respect and reputation that artists navigate, especially when they step into territories where they may not hold sway. One of the most talked about incidents involves Drake, a global superstar with deep connections in Houston, thanks to his relationship with Jay Prince, a well-known figure in the city's music scene and the broader world of hip-hop. Drake, believing he had Houston on lock due to his ties with Jay Prince, reportedly attempted to prevent any rapper associated with Kendrick Lamar from performing in the city. However, this plan did not go as expected. Jay Prince, who is often regarded as the boss of Houston, did not back Drake in his endeavor. Instead, it was Schoolboy Q, a member of Kendrick Lamar's TD crew, who stepped in and called out Drake's connections to the street as a joke. Schoolboy Q's actions went beyond just defending his right to perform. He used the opportunity to make a bold statement, criticizing the whole concept of checking in with local figures when rappers enter a new city. He labeled it an outdated and ridiculous practice, one that was more about extortion than genuine respect. Schoolboy Q's performance in Houston was more than just a show, it was a power move. He didn't just rap, he openly mocked the notion of checking in, calling it a joke and suggesting that it's nothing more than a way for people like Jay Prince to extract money from their own communities. This was a significant moment in the ongoing debate about the relevance and morality of such practices in the modern hip-hop world. The roots of this extortion culture in hip-hop can be traced back centuries to the Mafia's early days in 18th century Italy. As the Mafia moved to the United States, cities like Chicago, New York, and Philadelphia fell under their influence, living in fear of these powerful organizations. American street gangs and organized crime groups took note, and soon enough, extortion became a dark habit within hip-hop culture as well. With the immense wealth generated by rap music, these groups wanted their cut, and the practice of demanding payment for protection or access became woven into the fabric of the industry. Even the biggest names in rap have not been able to escape this practice. Take Tupac, for example. In 2011, shocking FBI records revealed that the Jewish Defense League, JDL, was extorting Tupac and other rap legends like Eazy E. According to federal authorities, the JDL was threatening these artists' lives and then swooping in with an offer of protection for a price. It was like a broken insurance scam, but with death threats. Easy e was a target too, just before he tragically passed away from AIDS. The FBI even suggested that these threats could have been directed at Tupac before his untimely death in Las Vegas. Today, street gangs are still playing the same old game, demanding that rappers check in when they roll into a new city. It's all about ensuring that these artists can move around safely without getting robbed or worse. In return, the rappers either cough up some money for protection or let local talent open for them at shows. It's like buying a hood pass, but sometimes the cost isn't just money, it could be your life. Some of the biggest names in hip-hop have been caught in this web. Remember when Kanye West had that tense moment in Philadelphia? He was just grabbing a bite to eat with some friends at a diner when a group of unknown guys showed up. They didn't order food, they just sat there watching him. Kanye had to hide his jewelry and lay low, but things were getting intense. That's when Beanie Siegel, also known as the Broad Street Bully, stepped in and turned the tables. Beanie didn't just show up, he made it clear that no one was going to mess with Kanye on his watch. But if you think Philly is tough, wait until you hear about Detroit. The Motor City operates on a whole different level, thanks to a man named Trick Trick. Rappers rolling into Detroit are expected to be introduced to the no-fly zone. Trick Trick sets the rules, show respect and pay your dues, or you're not hitting the stage in his city. On the Drink Champs podcast, he spilled the tea on how record labels would come to Detroit, exploiting local artists while profiting off the city's talent. Trick Trick wasn't having any of it. He shut that down, ensuring that the only ones benefiting from Detroit's scene were the locals. And for anyone brave enough to test the no-fly zone, they quickly found out that Trick Trick wasn't messing around. 
Rick Ross learned this lesson the hard way when he tried to perform in Detroit without paying his respects. Ross's show was blocked, and he couldn't even get inside the venue. It was a power move, a reminder that in some cities, you either play by the rules or you don't play at all. When pressed about the incident, Ross downplayed it, calling it just another day. His team arrived at the venue only to find it locked, like a standoff was brewing. Ross never even made it to the venue, and he insisted that he never had any interaction with Trick Trick. Instead, he waited at Greektown Casino, hoping the promoter would sort things out. But rather than clarity, Ross heard rumors about a gang flexing their muscles. He let the conversation continue, expecting someone to clear the air, but when that didn't happen, Ross addressed it himself. Ross got his bag, probably a hefty one, but couldn't shake the disappointment for his fans left hanging at a locked door. For Ross, it wasn't personal, it was just business. Yet something didn't sit right with him. If you're trying to prove your toughness, why lock out the lions? Ross summed it up perfectly, if it's someone that's supposed to be from the jungle, in the jungle, you don't lock the lions out. You let the lions in and lock them in. That's when you get your war, if that's what you want. On the other hand, DeBaby found himself in a tight spot but took a completely different approach. Known for never backing down, DeBaby was filming a music video in East Atlanta when a local gang rolled up, trying to test him. But DeBaby wasn't about to be told where he could or couldn't go. He stood his ground, telling them he wasn't checking in with anyone and wasn't going to start now. It was a tense moment, but in the end, DeBaby walked away with his pride intact, proving he's not one to play with. The contrast between Ross and DeBaby's reactions highlights the different ways artists handle local powers trying to flex. Ross played it cool, waiting for someone else to clean up the mess, while DeBaby went head to head, refusing to back down. Two different styles, but both remind us that in the brutal world of hip-hop, respect isn't given its earned. And sometimes, you have to fight for it. DaBaby later spilled the tea on Vlad TV about the narrow escape that could have gone south real quick. With so many cameras around, it's doubtful anything would have happened, but then again, people do act foolishly and egos come into play. When asked if he thought things could have gone wrong, DeBaby admitted that it could have turned out badly. But he kept it cool, aware that things could have taken a wild turn. He had just ordered pizzas for the whole film crew, trying to keep the atmosphere light and professional, but with egos the size of skyscrapers in play, who knows what could have popped off? Then there's Jay Prince, the Houston OG and Drake's go-to guy for street backing. His name has been linked to some shady business for years, but he's recently been making headlines for all the wrong reasons. For instance, when NBA Youngboy's house got robbed in Houston back in July 2020, Jay Prince publicly offered to return the stolen goods, which everyone saw as a not-so-subtle way of flexing his muscle. However, NBA Youngboy wasn't having it. He jumped on Instagram Live and told Jay Prince exactly how he felt about that public stunt, dismissing it as unnecessary and disrespectful. He made it clear that he didn't need or want Jay Prince's help, adding fuel to the ongoing speculation about the true nature of Jay Prince's influence in Houston. The tragic case of Migos Takeoff, who was shot and killed in Houston while supposedly under the protection of Jay Prince's son, Jay Prince Jr. has only added to the buzz around Jay Prince's involvement in street affairs. Fans believe Kendrick Lamar might have thrown some shade at the Prince family in his diss track Humble, seemingly warning Jay Prince to stay out of his beef with Drake or else risk exposing his son. While this is just speculation, the truth remains uncertain, leaving many to wonder about the real power dynamics at play. In the meantime, Schoolboy Q, Kendrick's TD family, hasn't been shy about calling out the so-called checking in culture. He views it as a joke and doesn't understand why rappers feel the need to cozy up to people they barely know for no apparent reason. He's particularly critical of the rumors that Los Angeles is one of the most dangerous places for rappers, dismissing them as exaggerated and questioning the logic behind checking in with someone who might have beef with other hoods. 
Schoolboy Q's stance resonated with fans, who praised him for his common-sense approach to the issue. Many agreed that the checking-in culture is beyond stupid, with one fan even noting that Schoolboy Q grew up in a L.A. gang and knows exactly how this works. He seems to have distanced himself from gang life, even mentioning that he'd never check in with anyone in Houston or any other city because he doesn't feel the need to. The drama didn't end there. Drake's rumored refusal to let any rapper affiliated with Kendrick perform in Houston sparked a wave of outrage. Schoolboy Q wasted no time dissing Drake on Twitter, calling him out for being soft and implying that Drake was hiding behind Jay Prince's reputation. He then took to Instagram to post a video calling out Drake and his crew, making it clear that he wouldn't back down. Schoolboy Q even went so far as to accuse Jay Prince of trying to extort Kendrick and his TD team, claiming that Jay Prince had demanded money in exchange for protection. When TD refused, things quickly escalated, with Jay Prince allegedly warning them that they'd need to check in or face the consequences. The situation escalated further when Kendrick dropped his new album, Damn, which included a diss track directed at Drake. Fans were quick to speculate that this was Kendrick's way of clapping back at Drake's antics in Houston. The track features a verse where Kendrick calls out fake rappers who rely on others to protect them, a clear shot at Drake and his alleged need for Jay Prince's backing. In the end, the whole episode highlights the ongoing tensions within the hip-hop world where power, respect, and street credibility are constantly in play. Whether it's Jay Prince's influence in Houston, the ongoing beef between Drake and Kendrick, or the broader issue of checking in, these incidents serve as a reminder that in the world of rap, nothing is ever as it seems. The only question that remains is who will make the next move and how the game will change in the process.